Our third contestant this morning is number 140, and she will be informing us about the birds and the weaves. We can talk about the game the last time you did it. Good. The talk before. Whether your parents sat you down to tell you this story, or you heard it in school. The story of the birds and the bees. There was a bird, and there was a bee. <laughs> and they loved each other. <laughs> Long story short, <laughs> they lived happily ever after. While it's important for parents to have this discussion with their children, there's another talk that isn't discussed as often. I received this talk at the Marriott Hotel after using the complimentary shampoo. The outside of the bottle read, shampoo. <laughs> but what it should have said was white people shampoo. <laughs> that night, my mom explained to me the differences between black and white hair. But it seems my Caucasian friends have never received this talk. And this has led to some pretty awkward encounters. Black woman's hair has long been the subject of intense scrutiny and offensive comments. If we truly want to mend racial tensions in this country, we must start at the root of the issue. <laughs> so today, let's have a little talk. I like to call the birds and the weaves. First, by learning a little Black Hair 101, then discussing the history of Black Hair before finally examining its effect on our youth and community. Because frankly, this seems to be a very hairy subject. So I think it's about time we called Becky with the good hair to get our class started today. A relaxer, a process where tightly coiled strands are chemically relaxed to create straight hairstyles. A hot comb, similar to a flat iron, straightens your hair while combing out curls along the way. Braids. Our hair can be braided with or without extensions. Hair braided with extensions can take up to eight hours. Weave. Touchy subject. This is the addition of the hair that you bought to the hair that you already own. And to save you some trouble, don't ever ask your black friend, is that your real hair? after spending hundreds to thousands of dollars on her hair. Of course it's hers. She bought it. <laughs> dreads, tightly coiled strands that hang down. And let's dispel a myth. Yes, dreads are clean, and wearing them does not mean you smell, sell, or smoke marijuana. You may see your black friend put on a funny looking cap when she comes to sleep over. A satin cap is used to maintain these hairstyles and many others that she has worked for hours to achieve. And your cotton pillowcase will definitely frizz it up. The miseducation of black hair has led to many myths and misunderstandings. This has sparked a recent movement called You Can Touch My Hair, where African American women allow passers by to touch their hair and answer questions in order to diffuse misconceptions. What they have concluded is once people take the opportunity to touch black hair, they realize that their hair is a lot like ours. And apparently, it's a lot more than just African-American women who are taking part in this wonderful movement. <laughs> the Huffington Post explains, the biochemical composition of Afro-textured hair is identical to Caucasian-textured hair. Its morphological difference is its elasticity and combability, which requires Afro-textured hair to have different needs. This explains why I can use that hotel shampoo. Because my cuticle doesn't lie flat due to my curly textured hair, my hair requires a shampoo that contains more oil in order to successfully reach my scalp. Every ethnic group scalp requires two things, water and sebum. Sebum. Produced in the sebaceous gland is an oily substance that lubricates our hair follicles. Water and sebum work hand in hand to moisturize our hair. However, when water and sebum are not able to drive directly down our hair shaft, 
It leads to dry hair. The form of afro-textured hair does not leave a straight path for water and sebum to drive down. As a result, African-American textured hair lacks moisture, which is why black women don't wash their hair every night. This has nothing to do with cleanliness, and it's not nasty. When you wash your hair, you are detracting oils from your hair follicles. And since African-American textured hair lacks moisture, washing our hair every night can be harmful. This is why, according to the Head Lice Center, only 0.3% of African-American students in school get lice, compared to 10.4% of whites. Who's nasty now? <laughs> Due to the products that African Americans add to their hair, it's more difficult for lice to attach to our hair follicles. But there is a lot more than oil that's dripping from the ends of black hair. There's a lot of history tangled within our roots as well. It is estimated that over 11,640,000 Africans left the continent between the 16th and 20th century due to the transatlantic slave trade. When Africans were brought to the New World, they were forced to accommodate to European standards, which viewed straight hair as the highest standard of beauty. And in an attempt to blend into their new society, Africans took extreme measures to achieve these silky strands. In 1905, Madam C.J. Walker created a line of hair products called the Walker System, consisting of iron combs, known today as the hot comb, relaxers, and other types of lotions. These products were used specifically to straighten black hair which led Madam C.J. Walker to become the first female millionaire in the United States. So African Americans wore their hair straight. Well, that is until Angela Davis broke the status quo with her beautiful black afro. Her afro was a reminder that African Americans should love their natural hair, despite society's standards of beauty. The fro was a powerful political sign that further moisturized the civil rights movement that pushed for African-American culture acceptance and worth. But unfortunately, wearing hairstyles such as Angela Davis's fro has led to many misjudgments in our society then and even now. African-Americans are being taught to wear their hair straight, to land a job, a promotion, or to even be accepted. Hampton University, a historically black university, placed a ban on dreadlocks and cornrows in their classrooms in 2001. Despite the outrage from the African-American community, this ban was successful in earning students jobs in corporate America. But this doesn't start in college. Elementary school students have been suspended from school for hairstyles that, quote, distract from the learning process. When we ban such hairstyles, we fail to see the underlying impact on our youth. For example, Melissa Harris Perry, former talk show host of MSNBC who wore her hair in braids, received an email from a viewer about her daughter. Her daughter watched the show, not because she wanted to see the news, but she was excited to see someone who looked like her on national television. The viewer later stated that watching Melissa Harris Perry's talk show kept her daughter's dream of becoming a model alive. The lasting impression was beautiful, smart, and accomplished black women could wear their hair in braids too. Or meet five-year-old Jacob Philadelphia. When he met President Obama, he asked to touch his hair because he wanted to know if his president's hair looked and felt like his own. These may sound like two simple, silly stories. But in Melissa Harris Perry's words, if you were the little black boy who could never see himself as the leader of his country, or if you were the little black girl that has grown up in a society that bashes little girls, such as Beyonce's daughter Blue Ivy for wearing their natural hair, if you've been the only girl at the pool explaining why your hair shrunk up like that, or if you've been asked if that's your real hair, if you are that person, the physical embodiment of the president and the first lady matters.
the hair of the president and the first lady matters. <laughs> and hair is ultimately what holds the black community together. And it has done so for years. Men and women spend hours in hair salons and barbershops. And not just to get their hair done. Historically, barbers have been leaders within the black community. Joyce Balsberry, a psychiatric epidemiologist and health educator, writes that the role of the black barbershop within the black community has been a safe place for African Americans to gather, to create strategies, and promote unity within their communities. Barbershops were places of refuge for African Americans during our country's most oppressive times. They were a central part of the black community then, and they continue to be today. I mean, I guess you could say barbershops are a part of our heritage. <laughs> black hair is unique in all forms, and it should be embraced like any other hairstyle. The more conversations we have about black hair, the less these misconceptions are to prevail. So just like they told you in the story of the birds and the bees, it's the same for the birds and the weeds. <laughs> the more you know, the safer you'll be. But it's not what's on your head that defines you. It's what's within. Thank you.